So looking at some blood vessels here on the hand, again we've got an anterior view of a right hand. If we start proximally, we can see here in the forearm a radial artery. So here on the thumb side, we can see the radius, easy place to take a pulse where the artery is running right along the bone. So that's the radial artery, but it soon splits into a superficial branch, which predictably is fairly superficial, and then a dorsal branch, which heads around to the back. So it goes under these tendons here and then into the anatomical snuff box. So it's in between these two extensor pollicis tendons. So if you can feel a pulse in the anatomical snuff box, that's the dorsal branch of the radial artery that you're feeling. Now we can see it carries on here, pierces the first dorsal interosseus, and then is going to be the main supply of blood to this structure here, which is the deep palmar arch. And we'll come back to that one in a minute. So that's the radial and superficial and dorsal branches. Then on the ulna side, we have an ulnar artery that travels up to be the main supply to the superficial palmar arch. So here's the superficial palmar arch. It's anterior or superficial to the long flexor tendons and also the lumbricals. So if those structures are still intact and you can see an arch, you're looking at the superficial palmar arch. And notice that it is more distal than the deep palmar arch, which is a bit more proximal here. So this is the superficial palmar arch, and the branches that come off it and travel distally here are the common palmar digital arteries. So these ones here, common palmar digital arteries, and they split at the ends of the metacarpals into proper palmar digital arteries. So these ones here, proper palmar digital arteries, and they travel all the way along the digit and then anastomose with each other towards the distal end. So common and then proper palmar digital arteries. Now the ones that you can see if we look at the deep palmar arch, the branches that come off that, and we'll have to zoom in and have a much closer look to be able to identify them a bit more clearly. So here's our deep palmar arch here. And here we can see a couple of branches coming off it. These ones are palmar metacarpal arteries. So they're smaller than the common digital, uh, common palmar digital arteries, and they're deeper. Now these ones would be deep to the lumbricals and the long flexor tendons at the same level as the palmar interosseous muscles. Now normally they actually anastomose with the uh, common palmar digital arteries up here anyway. So they normally just come into the posterior aspect of those other arteries. Now then on the dorsal aspect, we better just zoom out a little bit to be able to see it properly. On the dorsal aspect, we also have dorsal metacarpal arteries, which are here. And then they become dorsal digital arteries at the back of the digit. Now we'll zoom in again just to see that a bit more clearly. So here we've got, running along the metacarpal, or in the metacarpal region, we have a dorsal metacarpal artery, which will then become a dorsal digital artery. And you can see that it branches quite extensively and it's quite a bit smaller than the uh, proper palmar digital artery here. And note that the dorsal digital artery actually stops supplying blood to the digit about here. And the palmar one, the, the proper palmar digital artery, then carries on and supplies the dorsal aspect of the distal part of the digit as well as the anterior aspect. So these dorsal arteries are much smaller than the palmar ones, carrying a lot less blood. So that's the dorsal side there. Now, if we have a look at a different model that has some slightly different structures on it, so this time we've got a, an anterior view of a left hand, 
and we can see again the palmar aponeurosis. Oh, and what we can see on here that we didn't see on the previous model is palmaris brevis, little muscle there on the hypothenar eminence that covers the ulnar artery and nerve and is quite superficial, very small muscle. Now we can see again the superficial palmar arch and the common and proper palmar digital arteries here. But if we look deeper, this model does have something on, on it that the previous one didn't. Here, if we're looking at the deep palmar arch, we can see the uh, palmar metacarpal arteries, which we saw before, but we can also see this vessel here, which we didn't see on the previous model. Now, in order to be able to see it properly, let's have a much closer look. So here we've got a deep palmar arch, and this is the thumb here, and we've got uh, a palmar metacarpal artery coming up here, coming off it. So this little artery here is the princeps pollicis. Now that's the main artery that's supplying the thumb. So that's princeps pollicis, and that's the only model we have where that one can be seen. Now on the dorsal aspect of this model, pretty good as well. I nearly said it was pretty handy. <coughs> Sorry. Here we have in blue a dorsal venous network. So there we've got some veins and you can see it's quite an extensive network on the dorsal aspect of the hand, the dorsal venous network. 